Welcome to another RMS support tutorial. Today we'll discuss how to create and set up district staff users in government mode. Now let's get started. We will begin this demonstration in library mode. Access to RMS staff is limited to system or district administrators. You will need these specific permissions to proceed with any of these steps shown in this video. The RMS system allows the PMO office and headquarter office personnel to have access to accounts in all districts. The district administrator and office administrators will no longer be able to delete or modify the user accounts for their district if their account owner is part of the PMO office or HQ office. Click on the RMS staff module to continue. Click on any of the numbered boxes in the top section to see a list of people who are members of the selected subset. For example, if we click the active tile, this will display all the names of the accounts that are marked as active. Click on the name of a person in the bottom section to see the details on the selected person. For this example, we will search for a known account. This staff record displays useful information about the logged account. Click the back button to continue. To add a new staff member, click the add button. Starting with the RMS ID, for CAC holders, this is the eight character UPASS ID. For non-CAC holders, enter a unique alphanumeric identifier, then click OK. Enter the user's first and last name accordingly. The abbreviated name is a unique name for the user, with an eight character limit. This is the name that will be used to label data entries when multiple user entries are allowed. Enter the new user's email. When non-CAC login is enabled, this is the email used to log in. This field is required and must be filled out prior to hitting the back button. You may enter the new user's primary phone and extension when applicable. Select the office which the new user belongs to from the office lookup list. If the office is not listed, navigate to the local office module, then click add in the office tree to enter a new office for selection. For this demonstration, our office displays accordingly. Click Cancel and head back to the RMS staff record. Search for our record and double click to continue editing. Now let's choose our office from the selection menu and click OK to add. Select the new user's position from the district position lookup list. If the title is not listed, navigate to the district office module by clicking the back button, contract selection, then district office, then position titles. Then click the Add button. Since our contract already has the position title set up, we will leave this entry blank and return back to the RMS staff module to continue editing our record. Let's search for our staff record once more and double click the record to edit. We can now select the position from the lookup menu and click OK to add. If the user has left the district, check the inactive staff member box. It is recommended to use this setting instead of deleting the staff that have departed. Deleting a user may affect data that this user has entered. Check this box to identify a user who is a USACE employee with CAC but does not belong to the district. Check this box to identify this person as a resource for assisting users in this district. Check this box to include this person in the mailing list from the RMS Center. Check this box to restrict this user's access to government estimates, regardless of other settings that authorize access to the change request module. Click on Add to input the new user's signature block. Users may have multiple signature blocks. Whenever there is a signature prompt, the lookup list will include all the signature blocks, name, and title combinations of all the users that have been entered in this section. Use this area to authorize the user to perform actions that affect an entire district. Access can be limited or restricted to specific areas such as the district library or district office. District administrators are automatically assigned the same authority as full office administrators. To set up additional district admin rights, Click on the blue box to authorize the user to perform the selected actions and read write capabilities at the district level. Full district admin rights allows access to all areas of RMS for a particular district, including user roles and libraries. This selection allows read and write capability to the selected areas only. Check the boxes for areas which the user will be authorized. Be sure to assign these rights carefully since anything this user does here will affect the entire district. When there are multiple district administrators, be aware that the actions of one district administrator can conflict with the actions of another. Check this box to allow the user read-only access to view all data in contracts and libraries in the district. This setting also gives the user access to run summary reports. Check this box to allow the user to run district-wide summary reports without access to contract or library data. Use this area to authorize a user to perform actions that affect an office. His or her authority may be different in each office. Much like district admin rights, any changes made may affect the entirety of the office. Office administrators are automatically authorized full access with read and write capability to all contract modules in the office contracts. 
To set up office admin rights, check the show all offices box. All the offices in the district will be listed. Click an office to authorize the user to perform additional selected actions for that office. Check the actions this user will be authorized to perform. The full office administrator rights option authorizes read and write access to all local office modules. The selected office administrator rights option limits authorization to selected actions and read and write capability to the selected areas only. Check the boxes for the areas to which the user will be authorized. For this demonstration, we will select full office administrator rights. Use this area to authorize the user access to contracts. Access can be authorized for all contracts in an office, groups of contracts, or individually. Just as previously demonstrated, click on show all offices, choose an office, select a user role, and either apply to all the contracts or selected contracts in the area. Use this selection when a user needs authorization for identical access to all contracts in the office. Use this selection when a user needs only authorization to access a subset of identified contracts. This access, however, must be the same for all identified contracts. Users can have only one row in an office. Click on the back button once to authorize access in additional offices. Use this selection when a user needs uniform access to all district contracts. Selecting district-wide will remove all the by office contract rights previously set. Click on this box to remove individual contract rights. Previously set contract rights are removed and replaced with a district-wide role. Click on user role to select a role from the role definition lookup list. Select a role, then click OK. Now click the back button to save. In order for a user to access RMS3, it is not enough to just enter the user into the RMS staff table. The user must also be recognized by RMS3. This can be achieved by associating the user's CAC and or email address with the record. Link staff record. Use this method when the user has a CAC and will need to access any other financial data module. The CAC ID is the 10 digit number found on the back of the card. Enter the user's CAC ID in the space provided, then click OK. The staff record will be linked to the matching RMS3 login account the next time this member logs into RMS. Enable non-CAC login. Select this setting to allow a user to log into RMS without a CAC. Login is accomplished by using the email address associated with the user and a password. With this type of login, the user will not be able to access any of the financial areas such as payments, contract setup, or summary reports. For this demonstration, we will not enable this option. Click the back button to return. The role of the PII administrator is to make sure that the yearly PII training is properly maintained. The only way to become a PII administrator is to get the approval of the RMS PMO. The administrator will validate the documentation requested from the user and enter the expiration date into RMS. PII expiration dates will only show for government users where the enable non-CAC login has been checked. When all the information has been entered, click the back button to save the changes to the user staff record. Lastly, the user will need to restart RMS to apply these settings. In summary, we demonstrated how to create and set up a district staff user in RMS. As a reminder, access to the RMS staff module is limited to system or district administrators and you will need proper credentials to make any changes to a staff record. Depending on their rights, local administrators also have the ability to access RMS staff to edit permissions for user accounts within the local office. District administrators and office administrators will no longer be able to delete or modify a user's account if the account owner is part of the PMO office or HQ office. PII administrators will need to maintain up-to-date yearly training and must be approved by the PMO. If there are any technical difficulties while attempting to create a staff record such as error messages, crashes, or inabilities to access the program, please contact the RMS Support Help Desk by submitting a support ticket. Links to our contact information will be provided in the description of this video. We hope you found this video informative and thank you for watching.